Hey everyone, Cody here, and uh, welcome to my freezer. Let's turn on a light here so we can see a little bit better. Okay. Now in here I've got a bottle of purified water, which has been sitting here for an hour, and is not frozen, which means it is super cooled down to below its freezing point. Now I've got a thermal camera so we can see how the temperature changes as the water is solidified. To get it to solidify, I either need a starting crystal for the water molecules to link up with, or enough uh, agitation to then start the process. So I'm just going to whack it with a spoon here. There it goes. You can see the uh, water crystallizing. And then the thermal camera, you can see it lit up. The uh, yellow indicates that the temperature had risen. Yeah, that's right. As this water froze, it got warmer. Isn't that wild? What happened here is what sometimes happens to gold as it solidifies. If you have a droplet of liquid gold and it's cooling off, cooling off, at some point it lights up. And what happens is the temperature goes down, 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 and then jumps up back to the freezing point, and then goes down slowly again. In the case of liquid gold, it uh, jumps up and produces visible light. In the case of water, I had to use the infrared camera to see it, but same thing. It lit up as it froze as well. If you happen to live someplace where it snows, you might have noticed that it actually gets warm during the snowstorm. And that is because as the water freezes and crystallizes, it releases a lot of energy. It takes a lot of heat to cause water to undergo a phase change. That's between melting or freezing. But it doesn't actually take a lot of heat to cause it to cool down below the freezing point. It's still a liquid. You haven't uh, caused those bonds to happen. So I might be able to explain this a little bit better with magnets just like my uh, gas model. Uh, this probably won't work itself, but I uh, take some uh, magnets here and imagine these are your water molecules. And they're, they're moving around in the liquid fast enough that they uh, don't slam together. Like Maybe they'll come together, but they've got enough uh, kinetic energy to come back apart, right? Now, of course, they've got much less kinetic energy than a gas does, and so they never really get very far. So they're like, almost like in orbits. That's uh, a terrible analogy, but uh, uh, as you cool them down, they lose their kinetic energy, and they reach a point where they do have a low enough kinetic energy that they could stick, and that is the uh, freezing point, and you know, stick and become a rigid structure, the crystal lattice. But if they're oriented wrong, and they don't have anything to like. Uh, a pattern to stick to, then they'll kind of just bounce off of each other and they won't stick until you give them a little bit of a nudge to flip one, get it to come together, and then others will follow suit and it'll create the crystal. What I think is kind of interesting is that the total thermal energy of the bottle remains the same before and after I initiate the uh, freezing. Essentially what happens is when the uh, water molecules link up and form an ice crystal. The uh, momentum of the ice crystal, or you know, the, the pairs that have bonded, is now less than they had originally. So some energy got released, and that energy goes into the surrounding molecules and actually causes them to speed up a little bit. Of course, it can't heat it up more than the melting point because then it would cause some of the ice crystals to come apart. Now this of course means that the water did not freeze solid. It's kind of slushy, so only a small fraction of it actually crystallized. The gold solidifies much faster than the water because, well, it's a lot smaller than the bottle of water and its thermal conductivity is a lot higher. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.